everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Lacey and today's video I'm going to be sharing some of my ultimate cozy reads for the fall season I love all sorts of genres I love thriller fantasy romance um literary fiction like I love everything I am super into horror when it comes to movies so my idea of cozy might be different from yours um, but I have a stack of books here that I think that I have something for everyone in this list. So if you're not into romance, I have some in here. If you're not into like thriller or horror, I still have some in here. So, um, grab yourself something to drink and, um, maybe a snack and let's go through this list. When I go through these books, I'm just imagining like curled up on like the comfiest chair or a couch or your bed and it's like storming outside, like just like a, a light thunderstorm, nothing crazy, no high winds or anything like that. And um, you have nothing planned for that day and you're just gonna open up a book and maybe even finish it. So that's... All of these just like scream that to me like if I have a cozy night in or a day in these are some of the books that would come into my mind that would just be perfect for one of those days okay so the first book I have on my list is The Maidens by Alex McElides Mike McElides um I'm not sure how to pronounce his name but this is a thriller and it takes place on a college campus. So um, I really like academia books. I find the setting so cozy. So I had to include this one. This one, Dark Academia, um, because it's a thriller. Thriller, mystery, um, kind of cultish a little bit too. And also just super fast paced. If you've never read a book by this author, um, highly recommend. I really like um, his writing style. So there's that one. I do have some on this list that I still have yet to read, but it just like sounds like a cozy book. Next one is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This one is kind of more of a chunky book and it's also slower paced, but again, the vibes are immaculate. Um, this is a romance, but it's also, um, kind of magical realism a little tiny bit. This one, I'm sure everyone at this point has heard of this book. Um, but this one is about a girl in the 1700s who is about to marry someone and she does not want to marry at all. Like it's not, it doesn't even have anything to do with the guy that she's about to marry she just doesn't want to marry anyone so think like um Merida from Brave if you've seen that just not ready to um you know settle down and get married yet and so even though she was told not to she prays to the gods after sundown and the person or the entity that answers her prayers does not have her best intentions in mind so, um, the way she phrased it, um, he grants her her wish or answers her prayer and says that she can live forever, um, but she will live a life of invisibility. And by that, um, she, no one will be able to remember her. So, you know, she, people can see her. She cannot say her name. She can't even write her name um, because she is invisible. And anybody who meets her, spends time with her, the minute they walk away, they will not remember her. So very lonely life. Um, but again, it's cozy. It takes place in New York, which I feel like during this time of year, both fall and winter, New York just seems like the coziest place to be and um you know a little bit of magic in there and yeah so that's why i recommend that next one let's move on to something 
that I have yet to read. And I actually just got this book. Um, it is Long Live Evil by Sarah Reese Brennan. And this one is blurbed by both Holly Black and Lee Bardugo, which I love both of those authors very much. So this one, the reason why it comes to mind when I'm making this list is because this, our main character, dies and she has the option of living inside a fantasy world um, after death. And so she obviously chooses to do that because she is a huge reader um, in her life. And so she goes to uh, live in this fantasy world of her favorite book. And come to find out, she is now the villain in this story. So, um, yeah, I just, that's all I know about this book. I thought it sounded super fun. Um, and just living in a fantasy world of your favorite book and then turns out you're the villain. Like that just, it just seems like a fun, good time. So adding that one also, again, I really like this cover. She like looks like such a badass and I love that. Next book on my list is a classic. Can't forget a classic um, or can't not include one. Um, I chose Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is my all-time favorite classic story, probably my all-time favorite romance story ever. Um, this book is the ultimate enemies to lovers book. Um, it's about our girl Lizzie and she grew up in, she lives in a house with her parents and her four sisters, so there's five of them. And um, she meets this very wealthy man and they are in love, but they don't want to admit it. And things happen, of course, it's a slow, slow burn, obviously. It's, it is pretty thick with tiny writing. However, this is the only time you'll hear me say this probably, but if you do want to skip the book and watch the 2005 version, that is acceptable too because that that movie is magical and it's wonderful. The score is beautiful. The aesthetics are beautiful. The story is great. Um, and the cast is amazing. Um, but I do recommend the book because it is a good time as well. Next up is The Whisper Man by Alex North. This one is another thriller mystery. It's a little bit more on the detective side of things. So if you're into detective mysteries, this one might be for you. Um, I have no idea why I thought of this movie while reading this book. But if you are a fan of the movie Hide and Seek with Dakota Fanning and Robert De Niro, I think you might like this book. There's obviously a ton of differences, but the vibes from this book just reminded me so much of Hide and Seek. And I can't explain it, but, and that movie is the perfect fall non-Halloween movie. Like it is just... Oh, it's perfect. If you've never seen it, highly recommend if you're into psychological thrillers. Um, but yeah, this one is about children who go missing. And all these kids talk about this man who whispers to them to kind of lure them in. So um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about this book. But it's just, it's a really... I don't want to say fun because it is kind of thrilling. There is a scene in this book that will forever haunt me. It is creepy and I love it for that, but it is a scary book. So um, if you're into that and you haven't read this one, highly recommend. Next is another book I have yet to read. Um, and that is The Pumpkin Spice Cafe by Lori Gilmore. I'm reading my notes on here so I don't forget since I haven't read it yet. But I feel like everyone has been talking about this book and then recently it went on sale on Kindle. So I got it. It was like 99 cents. And this is what I know about it. I just know like some of the tropes. 
which is small town romance, which is always fun. Grumpy Sunshine, not my favorite, but when it's done well, I do like it. And I've also heard that this book is extremely spicy, which I feel like by now we cannot judge a book by the by its cover, especially when it comes to romance, because there are so many romance books out there with a very innocent cover and turns out that it's pretty spicy or extremely spicy. So yeah, I think I'm going to try to get to that one soon because it just sounds like a fun, quick read and who doesn't, who doesn't love like a fun little romance book every now and then. Next up is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This book is just cute. Like this, when I think of the word cute, this book comes to my mind. Um, this book is about a witch, but in this world, humans are not supposed to know about witches. And yet she has a YouTube channel where she is a witch. So on her YouTube channel, she does like witchy, like typical or stereotypical witchy things on there. Um, but she is actually a witch. And um, there is this house, as you can see on the cover, of kind of like a found family where there are three, I think there's three little girls who are all witches. And um, their guardian is on vacation and they need to learn how to master their powers. So um, one of the guardians who are there watching them while their um, main guardian is on vacation, reaches out to our main character to help them control their powers. So this book is, I would say this one is definitely Grumpy to Sunshine Romance. The romance does kind of come out of nowhere um, because when you read the back, it doesn't really sh say a whole lot about romance, but there is a romance subplot in here that kind of takes like um what am I trying to say it kind of is like the main focus of the story for a little bit which I felt I didn't mind it I know some people did not really like the romance which I can completely understand why so I do want to warn you there is romance in this book but found family is probably the main trope of this and it's so sweet and it's so cozy I I loved this book so much so highly recommend and I have another book that I have yet to read but I feel like I can't do any sort of fall book recommendations or even video without talking about any Adrienne Young books because her covers and I say this all the time but her covers just like scream autumn to me um but I chose Fable for this one because again I love fantasy. I love adventure. I think that those kind of books are perfect for a fall, rainy, gloomy day. Um, just getting lost in an adventure story, which I believe this is more, I don't think it's fantasy. I think it's more of like an adventure romance, but there might be fantasy. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what this is about, really, and I don't want to because I've heard really good things and I'm just excited to read anything from her. So I'm hoping to get this to this one fairly soon. And if you've read it, um, let me know how you liked it because I'm very curious about this one. And even if you didn't like it, I'm still going to read it because, I mean, last book on this list is Legends and Montes by Travis Baldry. Cannot do a cozy book recommendations without this book. This book is like the ultimate cozy book. This is if you don't want anything crazy, if you just want like vibes only, and you just want to get like lost in this like little slice of life 
does that make sense? Can you have like a little slice of life in like a fantasy world maybe? I don't know. But you just, it follows our main character who is an orc and she kind of wants to retire from battling and she opens her own coffee shop and literally the whole book is just about her opening this coffee shop, adding things to her menu, overcoming small little issues that any business owner would and it's just it's so wholesome and sweet and um I when I went into this book I was afraid thinking that it was going to be like too overhyped from like what it's about but I I adored it I know there were some people who didn't like it as much as I do or I did but I thought it was just so sweet and it was perfect for what I needed in that moment because I had been reading a lot of intense books so if you're ever like in that situation where you're reading a ton of intense books or heavier books and you need something just like lighthearted that you're not gonna really feel any emotion except for maybe like happiness I highly recommend this book because it's just so sweet so wholesome so cute you're gonna want coffee and pastries so make sure your kitchen is stocked full of those things or maybe go on a coffee and pastry run because you're you're gonna get hungry and thirsty for coffee reading this or tea never know but yeah and those are the books that I recommend for a nice cozy night or day in curled up on something soft with a good book so um let me know if you've read any of these let me know what your recommendations are for a cozy um book I'm always looking for recommendations and as you can tell I define cozy in many different ways so um yeah I want to know what your ultimate cozy book is and if you've made it this far in the video you should add the coffee emoji in the little coffee cup so all right thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video